She's your queen to be, a queen to be forever, a queen who do whatever His Highness desires. She's your queen to be, a vision of perfection. Of affection to quench your royal fire completely free from infection to be used at your discretion waiting only for your direction your queen to All praise to the Most High God, uh, Brother Yeshuron, I got my brother Sabrak, I got my brother Ben, and uh, the title of today's lesson is Marriage is Honorable. All praises, marriage is honorable. So we'd like to give all praise, glory, and honor to the Most High God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, allowing us to come together as brethren. The scripture says, um, and the multitude of the counselors, you know what I'm saying? Safety is in the multitude of the counselors. And we lean on those with more experience than ourselves. So today's title is marriage. So we just like to give thanks, all praise and glory to the Father for just keeping that spirit within us to strive for righteousness, to strive for truth. And at times that we do fall, we just pray that he continues to give us the strength to get up and move forward. Because the only thing you promise when you stay down is death, right? Yeah. I promise life in the end. So with that being said, hey, y'all brothers want to introduce yourself. Brother Sirach, we're going to go first. Kind of Brother Sirach. Um, uh, he pretty much said, you know, I'm Brother Sirach. You know, we, we just trying to do our best to stay diligent in this word. You know what I mean? Um, the Most High gave us an opportunity that a lot of people don't really understand. So we do our best to stay diligent, you know, uh, keep each other accountable. And, and just keep growing in this thing. Kind, kind. Brother Ben. My name is Brother Ben. Been the truth for a little while, man. And, you know, this marriage subject is something that um, we're harping on tonight. Um, you know, a lot of our sisters and brothers are not married. And those who are, you know, especially being Israel, go through these issues of trying to navigate and this world and go through these hardships with just dealing with the world and we bring it home to our significant others and sometimes take it out on them you know um but it's really not them it's the world and the pressure that we feel of you know trying to make it with everything that they throwing on our plate and um it's important that we realize that you know um not all the time the issue is with the spouse and maybe time it is but it still extends from mm. you broke up brother uh, uh, i can't hear you can you hear me yeah i can hear you now so we need to go through the scriptures tonight and um just try to bring it home, man. Kind, kind. And I'm glad you said that, uh, because what we have to there's no new thing under the sun, like the scripture says, right? What was at the beginning is still happening now. So I use the example of Adam and Eve in the garden, right? The enemy is always, has always going to try and come break up marriage because he hates marriage. The enemy would rather you be out there being a whoremonger. You know what I'm saying? Jumping from woman to woman. Uh, 
So the air, yeah, he the enemy comes to do what? Kill and destroy. So I'm gonna grab that in the book of uh Genesis, right? <clears throat> book of Genesis. Uh I'm gonna start at verse chapter three, start at verse one. It says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the most high God had made. And he said unto the woman, yeah, have God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. So off rip, the first thing I noticed in that is, who did the serpent come to? The enemy came to the woman, which is the weaker vessel, right? But he, his mission or his target was the man. So how do he get to the man? Through the woman. So that's how the enemy gets to the man. And if we and we see in society that it's a it's a what, what, what's this called? Man against woman, woman against man. That agenda have battle us fight, yeah. battle of the sexes, have us fighting against one another when we don't see that we have a common enemy. That same enemy that was there in the beginning is trying to destroy us and pull us apart. And I always reference that last Matrix movie. If you look into that movie, you'll see that. You see that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you'll see that the enemy knew that when man and woman are together as one unit, they're stronger. So he's always going to pull them apart. It's called, it's one of the oldest tricks in, in war. It's called divide and conquer. Mm -hmm. Hey, what was the password, y'all, to get on real quick? Luda. Yeah. Lowercase? Yes. Uh, All right. All right. So uh, now the reason I call, I, I, I have, I'm trying to get my son on. He, uh, he can't seem to jump on. But uh, the reason I had you two brothers come on, because you have, I've been married five years. You two brothers been married for much longer than I have. So I'm going to ask Brother Ben first. When did, when was the honeymoon over with? A honeymoon? Yeah. Like when you first get married, you no know, butterflies and, and, yeah. and you know what I'm saying? They call w it the w honeymoon w when is that over with? And it's that time to get the business. Really, after so many disagreements, you know, sometimes when you're not married, before y'all really tie that knot, um, you keep a lot of stuff to yourself. You know, you just deal with it. Mm -hmm. um, but once you tie the knot, then, you know, come to the realization that if you're going to be married, and you breaking you 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 uh can't hear you out. You went out again. And, um when you come to the realization that you know that you're in a union and it's for a long term that you have to um be honest and open up and discuss your issues with your um significant other. Hey, you know, you can't keep things away. So once it gets to that point, you know, that's, you know, turbulence in your relationship. But when you go through that, you just have to open up and be honest and um, communicate regardless to, to how you may feel. God. So um, that honeymoon feeling, I mean... It is never really over because it'd be moments where you can reflect back on that when you met, first met, and that. You break you, you broke off again, huh? All right. My brother's but um, you know my internet situation, bro. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, I know, I know. Yeah. You. All right. So, brother, uh, brother Sarah, same question to you. Well, I would say uh, <laughs> it's gonna sound weird, but the honeymoon phase is over. 
when the marriage begins. <laughs> Let me explain that. Um, the marriage don't begin don't begin once y'all sign that piece of paper. You know, it's official. That happy, <laughs> I love you all. It don't begin then. It begins when y'all have y'all first time that both of y'all are angry with each other, mm. heated with each other upset with each other that's when your relationship really begins and then that's also when the honeymoon ends you know what i mean because now we gotta uh confront these issues mm -hmm. and this is like let's say it's the first time you actually got into a serious heated debate now is the first time y'all got to figure out how to come to an understanding uh you know and it's, it's a lot of factors that's involved with it, but I believe like once y'all really, really get angry with each other and have to fight through that anger to stay together is when the honeymoon phase is over and the marriage really begins, you know, because uh -huh. the hard times is what is 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 what solidifies it. Uh, nowadays, the relationship don't even uh, go beyond that, that, that heated argument. Now, now we upset and now it's over. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to deal with you no more. Now nah, it starts when y'all start to fight through that anger and, and fight for each other for that relationship through that anger. Kai, and that's like something that my, my son was telling me, uh, you know, him and his wife went through something. They've been married like six years. And um, and I said, what changed? He said, we realized that we had to fight harder. <laughs> We had to fight harder. Anything that's you, you're gonna have to fight for it. When you go to work, you have to go to work to get uh, a paycheck, right? Mm -hmm. Marriage. I want to make it seem like marriage is a chore, but marriage is like a job. If mm -hmm. whatever you put in it, that's what you're gonna get out of, it, right? So you have to work at it, and like like both of you guys said, it's about communication. Nothing should be hid. Everything should be open. It should be transparent. Nothing hid. When people have secrets and stuff, that's when the problem comes in, right? And that's what we did. That's what I did in the world. You know what I'm saying? When I was in the world in relationships, nah, she ain't gonna know everything because this ain't really going nowhere. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So if that's the type of relationship that you want, it ain't. It ain't. It it'll never. It'll never, without communication, the, the relationship would never go anywhere. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to read uh, Genesis chapter 2 and verse 18. And it says, And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a help meet for him. Okay. Now, tell, now, a lot of our brothers have that word help meet. Um, uh, twisted, basically. A help me means she's better do what? Help us meet that goal that we're trying to reach as a unit. Uh, help me. I like that. Mm -hmm. Help me meet. But the thing is, and I found that with myself lately, right? What is the goal? B. What is the goal? If I can, uh, I like to say when y'all okay so one of the things we haven't been taught about relationships growing up and most of the time because our parents haven't been taught mm -hmm. is once y'all establish that y'all are going to get serious in this relationship man that's when the tough awkward questions should come out immediately give each other an opportunity to determine okay are we sure we really want to go through with this because mm -hmm. a lot of times we get into the relationship Woman got her own expectations about the relationship. Man got his own expectations about the relationship, but nobody's talking about it. So now we, we're hitting stumbling blocks because I want to pursue this. Uh, I, I don't want to work a nine to five for the rest of my life. So in between that, I'm going to try to pursue this. That's taking time away. Mm -hmm. but you never told me you was going to do that. I thought you were just going to provide and then, you know, be mine's. It's a lot of scenarios that, that pops up. Mm -hmm. So at the beginning, get all those serious questions out. What, what, um, so what is your plans in the future as far as your goal? Like you said, do you want to work a nine to five for the rest of your life or do you want to pursue uh, ventures and endeavors? Um, do you want kids? If so, how many? 
what is the uh, uh, the 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 uh, discipline actions for the kids? Because a lot of parents don't agree on discipline action. Well, I'm old school. I feel like sometimes I got to put my hands to 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 that to that ass cheek to to you know to don't spoil the child. So I got to use the rod. Mm-hmm. And 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 some parents don't believe you should do that. Just take something away from them. What is their religious structure going to be like? Uh, 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 what is, what are we going to talk about when it comes to certain scenarios like you being a mom and your son is uh, finally starting to explore and vice versa you being a father and your daughter starting to explore how are you going to reach these conversations it's a lot to consider in this here mm. all right brother Ben what was the question the question was what what's uh, a help me what does a help me in turn mean and, and from your perspective? Because like um, I read uh, Genesis that says he, he shall make a help me for him. Well, <clears throat> to me, is whatever that she can do to offset what you're trying to do. So if you on the outside working, she should be on the inside working. And if you're dealing with certain things that um, occupy your time and there's other things that need to be done, then she should be available to cater to those needs and, and vice versa. Mm. So um, and also when it comes to business, I mean, she is your first business partner if you're married. That's why <laughs> nowadays, even if she didn't dribble the ball, she get half of your paycheck. Mm-hmm. And um, that is a, a also a business arrangement. So it's more than just, you know, household duties and um, a regular nine to five is Um, detail also with with that woman and vice versa. So, you know, um, and that's what a legal marriage is as far as um, the government and, you know, in America and United States, when you, once you sign that, um, that letter or that um, contract, mm-hmm. basically it is a business contract. So, that's that's also being a helpmate. Fine, fine. <clears throat> and and like like for instance, I'm gonna use uh, my situation, right? My wife is very smart with the computer and the books and all that, right? So every like we need to find everybody has a strength, right? Your wife has a strength. She has to bring something to the table. You know what I'm saying? Uh, gone to the days where all you had to do was bring a, a pretty face and, and, and a nice body. Though I'm, I'm to the age where that don't even matter. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. What's up here is what counts. What's up here? Because when we get old and when gravity goes taking effect, none of that don't matter. What is she bringing in the mind? What can she bring to the table? You know what I'm saying? What is her, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, her, her contributing factor to the relationship. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What is her attributes. strength? Go ahead, up. Yeah, I'm saying, yeah, her attributes. Her attributes, exactly. You know what I'm saying? She has to be able to bring. And then also, we all know that, like the scripture says, uh, it's God, Christ, man, woman, right? But at the same time, even the CEO has a what? COO, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So she can give you, like, as men, we look at things more. Um, how, how men look at things, y'all? Give me a good like one. more logical or try to to work out scenarios, and sometimes mm-hmm. our mind just be running a mile a minute. We don't understand the complications of it. Mm-hmm. Sometimes she can calm that breeze and, and show you an easier path calm, if you're calm. willing to hear. Uh, I also like to say about that is like um, one of the things people don't understand is like. Um, that 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 help me does not mean does not mean um it's your way or the highway 
You see what I'm saying? That help me is and it and 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 this and, and and vice versa for the women, help me does not mean uh you go make all the money and I I you know whatever. No, nah, sometimes sometimes I could be the breadwinner, but you just that you you go make just enough income so that once all the bills are paid, we can enjoy uh a vacation from time to time or we can, you know, take a day off and relax together and have our, you know, intimate moments and things of that nature. That's what it means sometimes. Sometimes a woman, what it says in Proverbs, a woman finds uh, her way to, uh, and I'm roughly paraphrasing, a woman finds her way to help you make that in me. Mm. She finds something to put her hands to to help you get there. You see what I'm saying? But um, and it also tells you, you know, <laughs> women carrying all the burden can be stressful, and it's gonna cause. I got, <laughs> I got this scripture right here. Okay. Uh, Sirach twenty five twenty three. Okay. It says, hold on, hold on, slack it. Uh, what is it? Okay, right here. Uh, okay, yeah, uh, twenty five twenty. Okay, twenty two. Yeah, a woman if she maintain her husband. Is full of anger, impudence, and much reproach. That's what you're talking about. Indeed, exactly the one right there. I had that's crazy because I had 25, 23. I should have put both of them together. Um, but but yeah, that's that's real. So we was meant to be the providers, and mm -hmm. they was meant to have uh in, in my opinion on this understanding, that we was meant to be the providers. We were supposed to have the task of going, hustle, and get it, right. Yeah. But I, they was bred to help us ease a complicated task. Uh, but I know I know you see doing it this way, but it, it may work like this, you know, and, and, and it may work a little smoother if you do it this way, mm -hmm. which also get into uh, submission. Right. And mm -hmm. she have, she have submitted to you. She see what you're trying to do and she trusts you. But now she see a better way. And one thing about a good leader is he knows when to accept wise counsel and mm -hmm. when to let someone else take the lead who are more experienced in that. Okay. So, so what you just said then, is it so, I'm just trying to see how I can word this. So that if that be the woman, like say, you know, cause a lot of time we get that male chauvinist gene kicking in. Mm -hmm. Nah, she can't tell me nothing. I'm the man. Boom, boom, boom. This is how it's going to be. And like the scripture says, if the uh, blind lead the blind, they both shall fall into the ditch, right? Mm -hmm. So we mm -hmm. have to take a swallow a little bit of humble pie. And if she's right, and, and a lot of times I do that late, I should tell my wife to tell me something. And then I see that she was right. But then I come back and acknowledge that, like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. A little later. I always not damn, you was right. I should have listened from the beginning. But we have that in us. It's a, Some of us, a lot of us, have that in us with were from the life I came from, she I I I gotta be the one. You know what I'm saying? Cause mm -hmm. it, in the way it makes you feel it shouldn't, but in the way it kind of makes you feel less than the man, which is not right, you know what I'm saying? Because that's going off emotions. Mm -hmm. She if if we going by what the book says, she is your help me. So mm -hmm. whatever is good for you is good for her, right? So mm -hmm. if you got the right woman with you, she's not gonna she if, if you go off the deep end, she's gonna go off with you. Or but she's gonna go off too, right? Mm, no, not, not <laughs> you know, most in most cases, if a woman does that, it's simply, in my opinion, is mm -hmm. um, at that case is not really educated in that scenario as well. So if she just follow you is because she, you know, she got that trust in you. She don't really know about the scenario. You don't know about the scenario, but she trusts no matter what the outcome is, you're standing on your decision. Mm -hmm. But if she know the scenario, oh, she going to speak. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And I think I think a lot of times when we feel like that pride to get in there, you know, is like who you think you are telling me, you yeah. know, and then kind of find out you're right. Um <laughs> besides the emotion, besides <laughs> the emotion of that, I think it's also could be the way she approach you. Because we know they are emotional creatures. So mm -hmm. when they think they're they're communicating effectively, they're literally in some cases attacking your man, your pride. Kind. And that's what that pride. So you and, and and as a man, we have to be mentally and emotionally stable enough to understand that even though she came at me the wrong way, what she said is right.
Mm. So in that moment, that's where we do have to eat that humble pie. It doesn't matter who's around. It doesn't matter. If she's right, she's right, right? Mm. And, 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 and between you and her, okay, you was right and I appreciate it, but maybe find another way of approaching it not so uh masculine in that approach uh, <laughs> you uh, know <laughs> yeah soften that thing around the edges a little bit you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying because i'm not your enemy you can talk oh, to oh, everybody man. else outside of the house like that but but you know like me come to me the way you would like for me That's to come to you because you know in a man in, in a man uh uh presence that that direct and assertive approach he is a little uh, to women you get what I'm saying? So if they need you to be less of a lion, when you, we need you to be less of a lioness. To bring out the pictures. You know? Uh, All right. Um, you know, on that note, you know, my wife would like to speak briefly, give her, you know, her, her opinions on certain things. Okay, okay. You guys All yeah. right, hold on. Shalom, everyone. Shalom, oh. sis. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. So, I mean, I just, you you all are talking. Uh, are you breaking up? Business. It is very important for the man to have a vulnerable side to his wife. It is very important for that because that will let a woman know that she has a secure man and you guys can grow can grow strong together. Because like you all said before, the devil objective is to steal, kill and destroy. Yeah. And at every aspect of life, we don't realize how much the world wants to destroy the marriage. What you all have to contend with out there in the world on a daily basis as well as what the woman is contending with if she's at home you know with the children and things of that nature mm -hmm. so it's very important for that male to be vulnerable to the wife and again the wife be vulnerable to her husband as well mm -hmm. um and once you once you all connect on that level and make sure that you secure each other and have that affectionate time um what we try to do in the morning when we give the most high his time, we try to leave that little window as well for that time to love on each other um, because that's important. Um, okay. You because, both need it. Because and you don't you know can't. what the day, is, the day is going to bring. You don't know what's going to happen in that day. So that's a good way to get you, your day started off right. Okay. Exactly. I'll okay. hand it back over to Brother Ben. Kind, kind, the water. Brother Sirach, you got something? Um, so just real quick, sis, uh, the first part of the section kind of went out. We, we started hearing once you mentioned business, but based off of what I heard, man, I completely agree. You know what I mean? And that's true. Um, and, and we also have to have mothers. All right. So first we have to have fathers who can raise their son to understand when it's time to put their, uh, their pride aside and talk to their woman with that loving, caring understanding, because we have to understand that we are not enemies. With, like you said, since so much we face out there with our own uh, uh, in between times, we need to come back and be uh, the peace for each other. So I get that and I, and I agree. So we need to teach our men not to go off of emotions mm -hmm. and in every conversation that they have, no matter what conversation it may be, be uh, reasonable in that conversation and understand intellect over emotions. Uh, the moral right. of the subject, rather than how it's coming out with the aggression and things like that. And then on the other end, uh, we should teach our, our, our daughters um, in that moment, where you feel like it, it's not getting nowhere, where he's not understanding you, we're men. We can uh -huh. be hard-headed from time to time. <laughs> so sometimes it's best to, uh, to, to hold your tongue, step uh -huh. away and come back because seeing how you feel at the time and the emotions could convey the wrong message you're trying to give 
to him at that moment. So I agree with you on that, sis. I agree. Fine. And I think a lot of a lot of times what a lot of women are missing is the idea or to do to basically prayer and supplicate to the most high when things are at its very worst. Um, you know, or sometimes you're gonna disagree to agree, you know, and vice versa. And a lot of times if you're not really understanding what your husband is talking about or you know, don't agree with what he's saying. A lot of times we need to take that to the most high and pray mm -hmm. and have the most high to show us the different yeah. side of things instead of bickering about it, instead of wanting to be, you know, argumentative. Yeah. It's better to take it to the most high because the, through the Holy Spirit, it will be revealed. Okay. Uh, okay. One more wow. thing, King, and I, I'm going to yield. I agree. That's why a lot of times I tell people communication is key. But what's more important than communication is comprehension. Because exactly. a lot of times we can communicate effectively in our opinion, in our minds, but to the other person, either A, they're not listening to the full matter and they're picking out words that, are, that, that bothers them, or they're just not understanding the moral of the story at that time. And like you said, is it, everything is in God's timing, right? Uh, Brother Yasharan would tell you, you know, sometimes we face brothers out there that would be like, okay, well, maybe this ain't for you right now. We can't mm -hmm. say what's for you in the future. That's God's timing. So you? it's the same. It's the same. I agree with you, sis, on that there. How you, King? Kind. Kind. All praises. All praises. So, um, and at the end of the day, we do know that the scripture says that uh, marriage, what's that? Hebrews, Hebrews, what's that? Hebrews 13, four, marriage is honorable. Okay, okay. Yeah, Hebrews 13 and 4. Yeah. Grab that real quick. Man. Okay, I'm getting it right now for you, King. Right. This is book of Hebrews. Chapter 13 and verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all, in the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. So we gotta really understand what that means. Marriage is honorable. That's a God institution, marriage. And how do we honor our marriage? Well, first, first off, first off, by being what uh dedicated. You know what I'm saying? Being dedicated, the man do what he's supposed to do, the woman do what she's supposed to do, and respect and reverence one another. That's how we honor the most high God. And when we're honoring our marriage, we're in turn honoring God in that because he instituted that between man and woman. Bible says that we are to reverence one one another, right? And um, what's the other scripture? Hey, uh, give me Ephesians 5, 21. Okay. This is one that we kind of don't really focus on because, like I said, coming from a male chauvinist point of view in life, coming from where I came from in the streets, it was always the man with a highway. You don't want to do what I say? I get another one. You know what I'm saying? And then we, and that's when the whoremongering jumps in because nobody's going to be perfect. And what we have to realize, there's no such thing as a perfect relationship. Good. We're not going to always agree on everything, but it's how we, it's how we handle those disagreements. Yeah. How we approach it. Good. It's how we handle it. I, I don't agree with my mama every day, but I'm saying, but I still love my mom. And mm -hmm. I'm not going to say, uh, you ain't my mama no more. Well, I'm not going to talk to you no more. You know, you got to put, put her aside out. You got to put her aside. <laughs> you got to put my mama away. <laughs> <laughs> we, that's how it sounds with the marriage thing because once you marry, that's an agreement, that's a contract, and God don't like when we don't honor our contracts. That's in the Bible as well. Your vow, God don't take kind of people who don't honor their vows. Go ahead, I can pull that one out too. Okay, in the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 21, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. So that book says, that scripture says, submit yourselves one to another. It ain't just say the woman submit herself to her, the husband. The husband have to submit himself to the wife by doing, by showing reverence and respect to her. So it's a lot of things that I'm learning still. Like I said, this is no excuse, but like I said, I've been in this five years. I'm still learning how to be a husband, but there's one thing in me that has always been in me. There's no quitting. quitting. Mm -hmm. Ain't no quitting. You said that I, I came out. There's no quitting. Now, back in the day, like in relationships, 
Mm-hmm. Easy. But if something that I uh in this truth, since I come in this truth, something I'm taking very important are things that are committed to God, things that we bow to God. You know what I'm saying? So I just like just like the the agreement that our people made with God and books, we didn't know what we was getting into, right? Mm-hmm. But all the laws he said we would do. Amen. We started breaking those laws. Mm-hmm. And with breaking those laws came consequences. Okay. Same thing in your marriage. When you break that vow, you think it's got like in the world, you break it and go, no, there's consequences and, and, and judgment comes from God from that. Me and my wife had separated for a little time back in Tampa, right? And man, I caught hell. <laughs> con, con. I call hell. I'm gonna just go. Bible said we can separate for a time. No, that's the easy thing to do. That's what the world teaches you to do. Run, go. Okay. That problem's still there, and your contract is still there. You just hey, what can we? I don't want to be no Israelite no more. Can we do that? All these curses still whooping our asses. Still Even the ones it. that don't know they Israel. The curses that because we did that blood in, blood out contract with most High God. The curses still, even for the ones that don't know they Israel, guess what? They still suffer the curses. Okay, so like you can let me bring this out real quick. Go ahead. The book of Numbers, chapter 30 and verse 2. Time. And this is in the law. If a man vow a vow unto the Lord and yes. swear an oath to bind his soul with a bond. He shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceedeth out of his mouth. Mm. Just like that contract in that marriage. And the number one thing, what they say, do death through us part. Uh, Hard times, bad times. We got to figure this out because this is that contract. Mm -hmm. We got to see it. If we can't commit to the contract here, then we know we ain't going to commit to God's contract. You know what I mean? Because we said, like you said, brother, in that wilderness, all that he say we should do. We will do. That's a contract. That's a contract. Yeah. That's a contract. All praises, all praises to that. And uh, yeah, you hit the nail on the head with that one. But we in, in society tell society teaches us that when things get rough, we just give up. Mm-hmm. I don't like this. I don't like these shoes. I'm gonna get some more shoes. Yeah. I don't like this. I'm gonna get out. No. What and like like I saw watching the interview today, and he says it's not it. Well, it is about being happy, but you have to work at happiness. It's more about being proud of your accomplishments, being proud that hey, I'm able to take care of my family. Hey, I'm getting up every morning. Getting up every morning. You know how I feel in the morning time. You know how I feel in the morning time. I'm I, I'm not. I don't want no trophy because that's what I'm supposed to do. Okay. But at the same time, damn, I I push through. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I you push- can't, a, don't yeah. I always tell you how you feeling, man? I'm pushing. <laughs> don't I always say that? I'm, I'm pushing. Yeah, man. I'm pushing. Because <laughs> what's the alternative? What's the alternative? We got, as men, we have people relying on us. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You got, you got people relying on you. You got, now I know we're not all perfect. And we could be, I'm going to speak for myself, I could be doing a lot better. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I'm pushing. And most High God sees that. And we just got to keep these law, statutes, and commandments and have a plan. And that's the one thing that I'm lacking right now is a plan. In life, the the plans that I thought we was going to have didn't work out that way. But so you got to be able to do what? Pivot. You got to. You got to be able to pivot to something else. But that don't mean... Quit. If you don't like what you're doing, if you don't like what you're doing, find something different. But we still have to keep pushing forward. We still have to keep pushing forward. Brother Ben, you got something? Yeah, that's the scripture says that man devises his plan, but um, it's the most high who, who guides his step. Time. The times we set out to do certain things, man. Trust me, I know, especially like in business and making plans to do things for your family, you know, to support them and things don't go the way that you plan to do it. Mm -hmm. But during those times, that's when it's, you know, imperative that the couples that are together 
stick together and try to bond even closer during those times because right. it's always a, a spiritual wedge that appears in those situations and a lot of marriages don't succeed from mm -hmm. that and they don't realize it is it's basically spiritual i mean you get the arguing and bickering and then saying words that you know you can't take back in mm -hmm. kind and that's what the enemy, and that's what the enemy wants. And he's sitting, remember, they said that the enemy, he's the 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 prince of the power of the air, which means he's all around taking notes, seeing what your weakness is, saying how okay, I see what his tipping point, I see what her tipping point. I'm gonna cause that situation where those things come, what they call that the perfect storm. He's gonna pit you two against each other, and you'll know how to work out differences he'll succeed and mm -hmm. he'll win, right? Mm -hmm. But you still have to pay for that. That flesh still have to pay. There's no, life ain't easy. Marriage is not easy. Life ain't easy. We got to endure all things until the end okay. because at the end of the day, nobody make you get married. Anybody force you to get married. You know what I'm saying? But it is what it is. So we got to figure it's always a, a solution. But what we tend to do is focus on the problem. There's always a solution. You got something to run? No, I can't let her. Kind. So let's go to uh, mm, 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 mm. all right. Uh, Matthew chapter. I'm not going. We're not going to do this too long. So uh, let's go to Proverbs eighteen twenty two. Proverbs okay. eighteen twenty two. The book of Proverbs chapter eighteen and verse twenty two. Mm -hmm. Whoso findeth a wife findeth a good thing mm. and obtaineth favor of the Lord. Now, whoso findeth a wife findeth a good thing. Now, what we have to remember now, give me uh, Sirach 26 and verse 23. Sirach 26, 23. So if you got your wife and she nagging and she being wicked, and she just won't give you no rest. What does that mean? The book of the Ecclesiastes, chapter 26 and verse 23. A wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man. So boom, we can't just put it on her. That scripture says a wicked wife is given as portion to a wicked man. How God going to give you a righteous woman and you wicked? He going to give you exactly what you deserve and vice versa to the woman. Okay. Exactly what you deserve. So when the you, the woman is going all out of control and acting all out of spirit, she's a reflection of you. She's a reflection of me. So as being the head, I gotta look at myself. Yeah. If I can, go ahead. What a lot of us men don't understand is so it's in her nature to need that stability of a man. And if a man is not providing that stability, she would naturally freak out and get scared. Mm -hmm. When she gets scared, she becomes rebellious because she can't, you know, again, she can't submit to your decisions. You have not been consistent enough for her to believe is worth following your decisions. So now she's starting to act up. Now she's starting to rebel against, you know, things of that nature. Now, remember, wickedness doesn't mean a woman is wicked. It's just one of those things where it's going against the law at that moment. So when she's freaking out and she's not thinking about the law, yeah, she's being wicked at that moment. Right. And 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 you get to the root of what she's freaking out about. Uh, how, how confident have you been in those decisions lately? Or uh, uh, how well... And percentages have those decisions worked out for you guys. And, and when you make those decisions, is it in haste or were you did you really take the time to try and figure scenarios out before you went to? These are factors because you do things in haste, not counting the cost. You mm. both have to suffer for that, um. especially if you do things in haste and, and, and the advice she's giving you is actually a sound advice and you're not paying attention. <laughs> and it goes bad. Oh, you ain't gonna hit the end of that. Oh, you ain't gonna hit the end of that. You ain't gonna hit the end of that. Wow. No. 
<laughs> no, you still talking about that? That was two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> but but this is what it is, right? So when it says a wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man, that's understanding that the the woman is with you for the most part. It should be she should be with you because it is more than just the uh, the chemistry. You're proving yourself. If she can't trust you, then she's wasting her time. Mm-hmm. If you, if she can't trust you, then you're wasting your time. Now, if you're working hard, doing everything you can, let's say on a scale of 100, I would say 60% of the time your decisions are good, 40% of the time is bad. That 60% of the time should be noticeable in her. And if she loves you, trust me, she sees it and she acknowledges it. That's probably why she's sticking around right now, yelling at you in your ear right now, (laughs) because she understands that sometimes you make mistakes. But in those 40% of time when you make mistakes, look back and see if she was in your ear telling you what was right. Mm. You see? Are you okay? Kind. uh, Grab, Brother Ben, you got something? Yeah, for example, like with my wife, um, she called me hard headed. She called you what? Hard headed, like. Oh, yeah. That's how you know you. you that's know, how you know Israel. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, I tell her, bro. I, I was born like that. I fell on my head and I was a baby. I know I'm hard headed. <laughs> um, <laughs> but and I tell her, you know, just like you said, Yashara, it comes to a point where. If she right, then I have to be like, yeah, swallow that pride. She right. And I got to do the way she want to do it. Mm-hmm. And she might be like, nah, if we going to do it your way, then I have to double down and insist, no, you are right. Even though I was arguing with you, I'm going to always give you my opinion and my side, how I see things. I mean, that's mm-hmm. communication. We have to do that. And then we hash it out that way. I mm-hmm. can't just dictate what I'm saying to you, and then that's what it's gonna be. Stifle yourself. Nah, I want to hear your side too. Tell me what you're saying, and mm-hmm. that's what I demand from you. Then we could weigh it in the balance. And then if it makes more sense that I listen to you, then I have to listen to you. My pride not gonna let me just go. Nah, she right, but man, forget that. I'm the man. <laughs> that's that's foolishness. But uh, yeah, like I was saying, based off of what he was saying, uh, and I'm gonna make this quick, brother Ben. I understand, uh, but uh, like you were saying, that pride we have to put aside. So it's two verses I really want to bring out. First one is Proverbs 16 and 18. Mm-hmm. Pride go before destruction, and the hearty spirit before fall. And the reason why I brought that out is because pride wasn't meant for men. Let's go to Ecclesiasticus chapter 10 and verse 18. Pride was not made for men nor the furious anger for them that are born of a woman. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like these, these, it, it te- listen, we have the instructions here, man. And we just got to know how to find it and look for it. But you're right, brother Ben, man, that pride can be, can be detrimental to us. Mm-hmm. And, and we need to learn how to put it aside so that we can make the best decisions. Cause our job is to think uh, uh, logically, not emotionally. Mm. And, and, and the brother in the uh that on that, that interview I was watching, the guy was saying that's why he played chess, right? Because and when you when you play chess, you can see the pawn, everybody can see everybody see everybody's pieces. But what are you gonna do to stop this? Mm-hmm. We can see the problem, but what are we gonna do to solve it? So life is like chess. You gotta be thinking marriage. Being a leader, it's like playing chess. You got to be thinking two, three steps ahead mm-hmm. instead of just being in the moment and day to day, right? And that's what I've been realizing. I've been like day to day. You know what I'm saying? For the most part, well, I'll probably day to day. I'm going to just be real day to day. But what are we, we going to be at next year this time? Why are we not playing out for next year this time? Where are we going from here? Instead of just, okay, I got to get up and go to work. You know what I'm saying? I might go to the movies this weekend. Uh, what plans are we making for the future? Life is like playing chess. I know my brother Ben knows that brother, that dude that be killing me in the chess. I don't think I'd be <laughs> getting. But life is like chess. We need to be thinking three, four moves ahead. 
Because we see all the pieces on the table. The Bible gives us all the answers we need. We just got to put move the pieces accordingly. Mm -hmm. And don't be sitting up here whining. Well, my bishop, I wish my bishop didn't make this type of move. You know exactly what your bishop can do. Mm -hmm. You know exactly what you can do. You know exactly what every, every, every piece has a specific job to do. Can't do what it's not supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's what we have to do as men. A real leader or a good leader thinks three, four steps ahead, not just day to day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Take good counsel. I don't have all the answers. I don't have or have people that we can go talk to. Elders. That's what the book says. What's that? Do not be 32 7, right? Ask that oh, elders and he does mm -hmm. Bring that out up. Like, take that pride. Because, like, when we drive, when you and your wife in the car driving, you know damn well you lost. <laughs> and she say, Where you going? I know I'm going. No, I don't. Stop asking about that. Pull up Google. Do something. Now we're going around in circles because you're too proud to ask for help. Right? Yeah. Hey, was, uh, what, I'm sorry, Kim. I'm, I'm you sorry. are me 32 and 7. Yeah. yeah. Okay. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32 and verse 7, remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will show thee thy elders, and they shall tell thee. So we should have somebody in our lives, an elder in our lives that we can go to because I don't have all the answers. I don't have no answers. Not all of them. You know what I'm saying? Even if I do think I'm right, always get a second opinion. Always, If it's something that you're not, your, your spirit going to tell you. You ever did something like, I don't think I should. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Listen to that a lot. And then we get ourselves into situations where, damn, I should have listened. So always have somebody that we can go to for counsel. And I know I want to bring out two more scriptures before we get off here. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 2 and 3. Good. And Brother Ben, you with us? All right, go ahead, Sarah. Yeah, I'm here. All right, go ahead. Go ahead, Sarah. Okay, kind of the book of Ephesians chapter 4, starting at verse 2. With all lowliness, and meekness and long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the uh, uh, unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. I think say endeavoring to keep the unity of uh, peace. And what we'll read that last part again? Uh. Kind, kind. And endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. Boom. Endeavoring. That's not, that ain't easy. Endeavoring, which means you doing what? You working at that. You working at that. Peace ain't peace. Peace isn't easily obtained. Mm -hmm. How you get peace? I remember. I remember. Uh, I, my old saying was, "Man, you cannot put a price tag on the peace of mind." Okay. You know what I'm saying? Peace is not something that's easy. You have to work at it in your marriage. You have to. You want peace? Y'all got to work at it. And you're going to go through sparks and scrapes and whatever, but it's, it's the, the common goal was what should be the common goal is peace at the end. We got to go through all our differences because you're two different people coming together. And you're, mm -hmm. still, you're not all the way to say we don't have the same mind. That's a good thing. That's not a bad thing. <laughs> we don't have the same mind. We don't think alike. alike. But opposites are trying. You know what I'm saying? She got some good things. She, I got some things that we come together and make mm -hmm. us better. I don't want her to be just like me. You know what I'm saying? I want her to become, she's just like me. What's the point? Look for kind, kind. Well, do you kind. understand what I'm saying? Uh, kind, two heads are better than one. If it's the same heads. mind, if you think exactly the same, y'all finna run into the same <laughs> school. Well, that'd be a problem. But now, I, I've already did like, that. Why are you doing that? <laughs> sometimes you be like, damn, why she don't know? And that, that's, I'm gonna speak for myself like, damn. But in all situations, I see things she don't see, and she sees things that I don't see. Come, come, come. And that's so. I like to say uh, before you get to the next verse. I'm sorry to let me back on you. I, I like to say uh, once y'all establish what y'all, you know, once y'all got to that table and, and 
put it all out there. I got the hardest questions out, the most uncomfortable questions out. Uh, every, what, six to seven years, come back to that table until you reach that age of where you're stuck in your ways. Mm-hmm. Usually around 35, 36 is when you get that stuck in your ways mentality. Mm-hmm. But if let's say y'all met like me and my wife. Me and my wife, we met at the age of 18. Mm-hmm. We and, and since then, every every date of birth we spent together. So like, but every every six to, to seven years, come back to the table. Because what I used to like when I was 18, I don't like now. Nah. Mm-hmm. When I was 22, I don't like now. Nah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? The way I used to choose women. When I was 18, I don't choose them like that now. Mm. I'm much wiser now. All yeah. praises to the word and the most high. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And, and and it's serious. I look at women differently now. It's more of a respect factor in it, you know. And and you know, I used to like I used to like sugar when I was 18. Now I need a little less sugar. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And, and you know, don't put too much in my Kool-Aid now, you know. Like I said, things be thick at the bottom. It'd be thick, you but that's like syrup, that. you know what I'm saying? So yeah. <laughs> so when it comes down to it, man, we gotta understand until we reach our stuck in that ways, you know what I'm saying? Until we reach that pattern. Keep coming back to the table and saying, yeah, I know you used to rub my back like this, but now it's starting to irritate the skin. Yeah, we kind of got to change that now, you know. It, uh, you grow uh, up. Yeah. Brother Ben, you got something? No. All right. So last scripture. Um, uh, oh, you did two and three in the Ephesians chapter four, verse two and three. It, yeah, chapter four and verse two and three. All right. Uh, last one. Um, First Corinthians chapter thirteen verse forty-five. Okay, the book of chapter, uh, so the book of First Corinthians chapter thirteen, mm-hmm. and verse four, starting at verse four. Charity suffereth long. Oh, you got it, brother Ben. What was it? Uh, First oh, okay. Corinthians thirteen chapter. Uh, Slack it. First Corinthians chapter thirteen verse four and five. Hey, uh, Sarah, grab First Thessalonians five and eleven. That'd be it. Okay. Okay. First Corinthians chapter thirteen, verse four: Charity suffers long, and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity wanteth not itself. Is not puffed up. Does not believe itself unseemly, mm-hmm. seeketh not her own. So, so charity and love is love. Love isn't puffed up. Love don't think about itself, me, 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 me. Love thinks, especially in the marriage, love is us. Scripture says you are one flesh now. So if I want to stay me, I would stay seen. Marriage is about a union, unity, two becoming one, having the same goals, the same mission, and the same, um, and it's true, but the same goal is getting to the kingdom, but first and foremost, making our father proud, doing yeah. his will, not our own will. And that's what we got to realize, it's not, it's, not, it's not our will, it's God's will. In marriage, it's not always going to be my way. It's not always going to be her way. It's the right way and whatever, the, how God designed it to be. Okay. That's what we got to remember. Okay. Go ahead, uh, first Thessalonians. Look at first Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11. Mm-hmm. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as ye also, even as also ye do. Uh, so we got to comfort, like the book says, reverence one another. Comfort one another. Uh, let me grab this scripture real quick. Hey, Sarah, I know I keep saying it, the last one. It's Sarah, right, 25, right. 21. I mean, Sarah, 25 and 1. I'm going to read this one uh, right here. It's uh, Sarah chapter 20. What is it? Sarah chapter 25 and 8. It says, A wicked woman abated the courage. And make a heavy conscience, a wounded heart, a woman that will not comfort her husband in distress, make weak hands. So like you, what was that verse, King? Well, what was the chapter, book, chapter verse? Oh, Sirach 25 and 1. Yeah, I got that one. Which one you just read? Oh, the one I just read was Sirach 
25 and 23. And a 23, woman okay. abateth the courage, right? Make up an heavy countenance and woundeth the heart. A mm -hmm. woman that will not comfort her husband in distress maketh weak hands and okay. feeble knees. Okay, okay. And I just had to clarify because you, uh, you 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 slipped up and said uh, Sirach 25 and 8. Oh, so, uh, sorry, I just wanted sorry. to, you know, the the, the, the follow with you. Uh, the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 25, verse 1. Mm -hmm. In three things I was beautified and stood up beautiful full. I mean, I'm sorry, and stood up beautiful both before God and man. The unity of brethren, the love of neighbors, a man and a wife that agrees together. Con, con. So that being said, I'm going to ask both of these brothers one last question before we go out. What's the, the, the ingredient or what's the key to your, your marriage 15 years in? What's the one key thing you can say that held y'all together so long? Commitment. Commitment. It's, it's, yes. Uh, when we was, when we was 18, head into this forsaken, wretched, wretched place out in Dade County, Miami, <laughs> uh, Homestead, Miami, I'm sorry. Uh, we looked at each other and said, we're going to stick together. Now, we didn't know what that meant and we didn't know what God had planned for us. But now we are in, in 35 years old, both of us 35 together. So, you do the math there, you know what I'm saying? And uh, <laughs> commitment, we got to stay committed and improve our love for each other. Because if you, if I say I love you, and as soon as things get hard, I run away and I edify you and help you through that situation. I'm not showing you love because I got to, you know, I got to keep the commandments. Kind. And by kind. keeping that commandments, it's showing you love. Kind. Brother Ben, same question. I say uh, humility, man, because we both have faults, and you think your faults better than hers, and she think hers better than yours. That's an issue right there. So, you know, humility, you have to humble yourself even when she's wrong and when you're wrong. Somebody got to step up and, and be that rock for both y'all sometimes. Because both y'all are stubborn and um, look at each other's fault as oh, mine bigger than yours, yours bigger than mine. That's not the case. Because mm. the most high sees us the same. If, if we going to be together. Huh. We just broke up, King. Uh, one last thing, though. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the one thing that I heard from Elon. All right. Mm -hmm. A man that says, I'm sorry when he's wrong is honest. A man that says I'm sorry when he's not sure is wise. And a man that says I'm sorry when he's right is called a husband. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little quick joke for y'all, but that was from Elon, man. Elam yeah, kind of, kind of, kind of. Elamites. And I remember this one couple used to always tell me, uh, and, I, and I think it's a scripture the Bible says, sometimes you just gotta take the L. And that was so hard for me to because I'm not, I'm not you, I take the L. What? But there's one couple, there's one married couple, there's like uh, brothers and sisters, so like, even when you write, sometimes you got to take that. And the Bible says that. Uh, let me get that last scripture. Uh, what I'm thinking about, uh, uh, is there not one of you? That's uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Take uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and... Oh boy, hold on. First Corinthians chapter 11, and where is that? Um, no, first Corinthians chapter 6. First Corinthians chapter 6. Oh, brother. Okay, yeah. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 7. I'm going to start at verse 6. It says, but brother go to law with brother and that before the un unbelievers. Now, therefore, there is only a fault among you because ye go to law one with another. Why do ye not rather take the wrong? Why do ye not suffer yourselves to be defrauded? So sometimes, even though, you, even if you write for peace sakes at that moment, 
All right. You know what I'm saying? We can't. It, sometimes in the situation, nobody's going to win when when emotions or tensions are high. Sometimes I'm like, all right, you're right. But then we're going to come back and revisit that situation at a later time. I take the L right now. You don't always have to be a winner. We're going to be in the end, it's going to have both of us winning in the long term because we're, we're, we're um, diffusing the situation. If everybody won't always be right, I think I'm right, you think you're right, we're going to keep going bumping heads, right? So what that scripture is saying, hey, sometimes you got to take that. You don't mute up. So like, I'm sorry. And there's also another verse that actually support that, which is, you know, we, we know it's speaking, it's speaking to, you know, those who sought to accuse you and everything, but you know what I'm saying? There's a time and a place for everything. So Matthew 5 and 25, yeah. agree with thine adversary quickly whilst thou art the, uh, in the way with him, lest at any time the adversary deliver thee into the judge, the judge deliver thee into the officer, and thou and, and thou be cast into prison. It's pretty much saying like even you know when the police pull you over, that ain't the right time to the the, the debate who's right or wrong. <laughs> like yes sir, yeah. yes sir, go ahead and give him a ticket so I can make it home safely. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get locked up, and ain't no telling if I'm gonna make it because it's been plenty of times they went in the back of those cop cars and nobody yeah, made it to the jail cell. Yeah. So yes, there are times where you have to take that loss mm -hmm. for for safety's sake. For for uh, moving peace on sake, yeah, peace sake, everything, kind of, kind of. Yeah. Oh, so, so Ephesians four also harking on that. Ephesians four and um twenty six. Kind of book of Ephesians chapter four and verse twenty six. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. And in verse 27, neither give place to the devil. Ooh, God, that's the kicker right there. Because when we get angry and coming out the spirit, we give giving, we opening up our temples God. and letting the enemy come in. Uh, 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 what's that? A body, a, a, a mind not well. What that is, dang, what's that scripture say? Uh, he who can, cannot control the spirit is as a town without walls. No protection. God. You open yourself right up to the enemy. Con, con, all praises. So with that being said, all praises to the most high God. With a little lesson on marriage for those about those out there who are planning to get married or are married. Um always count the cost. Prove one another. Try one another. Try a friend. Because once you make that agreement or do that contract, it is what it is. You gotta deal with it, right? You gotta, you gotta find solution instead of always looking at the problem. There's always a solution. The Bible got an answer for every every scenario. There's mm -hmm. answers to every question in this Bible. Are you willing to humble yourself and read it and apply it? Okay. Yeah. With that being said, Kwame Estrada, rise up Israel. Shalom. 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 Shalom.